It's 100.3 Phillies R&B. Mina, say what? In your midday. So this Sunday, Tweet is coming to the City Winery for two amazing shows. We've been giving away tickets, and I have the honor and pleasure of having Tweet on the phone with me right now. Hey, girl. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you feeling ahead of this performance on Sunday? I'm excited. It's always a great thing to come to Philly. I love Philly. I was going to say that. You do love Philly because I know you got little ties here and there to Philly. Philly, and I know you've been popping up here and there. So um, yes. we love yes. you, too. We love your music. We love to have you Thank here. You. Thank you so much. I, I'm, I'm so excited. I can't wait. So you're celebrating the 20th anniversary of your debut album, Southern Hummingbird, which g- gave us two songs that we play here on 100.3, Oops Oh mm-hmm. My, Call Me. 20 years. Does that feel like a long time ago to you, or does it feel like the time just flew by? It flew by. It seems like it was yesterday. Every day... I- I, you know, I hear 20 years, it's like, I can't believe it. You know, it just doesn't seem that long. Right. But it actually, 20 years. <laughs> well, you're an R&B veteran now, you know? Like, how does that yeah. feel? There's a whole new wave of R&B artists that, you know, listen to your music and were inspired by you in some way. Yes. I mean, it's it's totally humbling, you know, um, and I can hear the influence, but I'm I'm totally like geek that people will still even want to even hear hear my music and just, you know, think about me from time to time. Yeah. What have you been up yeah. to lately? Talk about what you've been working on. Well, definitely been um, gigging a lot, you know, hitting the shows, definitely more of the, the city wineries, the, the summer um, fest and all of that, and also working on different other projects. I have a wine that's out, um, uh, Moscato. It's at uh, astarmoscato.com. You can pick that up. And we're working on a couple of other projects, uh, clothing and things like that. Love it. So you're just going to skip over the fact that I believe you're being (laughs) inducted into the Rochester Music Hall of Fame. You just going to skip over that tweet? (laughs) You just going to not say you're being inducted into the Rochester (laughs) Music Hall of Fame, which is a big deal for you because that's your hometown. Exactly. Yeah, that happened maybe a month ago. And it was such a a beautiful thing just to be honored from where you've come from. And I was the first African-American woman to be inducted. So that was the, um, you know, all my family was there. So that was exciting to know as well. And also I got the president. So uh, I was at the Essence Fest and was surprised with the the Lifetime Achievement Award signed by the president. So the little things are happening, you know, I'm, I, little old me, for little old me, so I'm excited about that. No, girl, that needs to come first. Right. <laughs> you should have put that in the beginning. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so you, you're getting recognized for the work that you've done, and you rightfully deserve it, but I know there was a period of hardship where you turned around and, you know, you, you really relied on your relationship with God. Can you talk about that spiritual journey and what kind of helped you overcome that? Well, it, it happened because after the second album, you know, signed to a whole different um, record label at the time, and they didn't really know the type of artist I was. Mm. And I was kind of pulling teeth to even get a single out, and they just was like shelving me, and it was really taking a toll on my soul and my spirit. And I decided to take that hiatus, and just that was more important to me than putting out music. And that's what brought me back to music. God really sat with me and told me, you know, this is what you needed to do, because sometimes we get confused in isolation, and that's what I did. I isolated myself, but Mm. in isolation, it comes elevation. So he elevated me back to where I needed to be with the right mind and the right spirit. Love that. Love to hear it. So I know you Mm. recently worked with Missy Elliott on your last album and she was on your debut solo single, Oops. You know, Mm -hmm. Missy has been really getting her flowers lately, rightfully so. As someone who has worked with her for so long, can you talk about how innovative she is? Oh my God. This has been well before before her time. We've met, we've known each other since early 90s, 92, 93, something like that. And even then, Missy was thinking spaceships and, and all of that stuff, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> she's always thinking a way ahead of her time. And it, it's not surprising that, um, you know, she is getting all of her flowers. It's never too late, but she should have been gotten a lot of this stuff. But I'm so excited for her. 
because she is an innovator. She created a lot of stuff that people uh, are doing today. Yeah, I agree. I want to talk about something uh, regarding Aaliyah. So I was noticing, and, you know, we play uh, Miss You, and I remember Mm -hmm. watching the video, and I'm, like, remembering all these years how many people were in that video because that was put out posthumously after her passing. And uh, DMX did that beautiful prayer in the beginning of the video and you were in it. And you know, Mm -hmm. I think like Tony Braxton and Tank, I think I saw Lala in there. Can you talk about that video and that day and and, like putting that together? Her passing just um, was a very bad hit, you know, a heavy hit on the industry. And I remember um, Missy saying that they had this video and I was just really coming in support. I wasn't even going to be in the video. And mm. they were like, oh no, um, you just stand there and because and, I knew the song because Missy would play it. So um, yeah, that's what I remember of it. And there, there were so many people from Playa to Little Kim. So everybody was there just to pay homage and, and tribute her, you know what I mean? So that's what I really remember about it. It was a, a, a tearful moment at times, you know, and people were very sad and 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 but they wanted to pay um homage to her so that was a great great uh video set yeah at that time oh man i literally i hadn't seen the video in years and then i stumbled on it like you know yeah. recently and i don't know if maybe it was like god putting it in front of me because i didn't even mm-hmm. know i was going to interview you at the time but oh, wow. i was like wait i ju- i didn't i was like i just seen tweet in the miss you video you know, right. so I definitely, you know, wanted to talk about that and see what that yeah. was like. Because I know it was very hard for Missy. I was reading it was yeah. hard for her to even put that together. It was like a, an emotional moment. Right, definitely for everybody, anyone that showed up. Because it was like almost an all day, you know, pretty much a long time, you know, that, it, that people were coming. We had to wait for different artists, but it was tearful. It was a emotional moment every time. Yeah. Well, Tweet, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for, you know, sharing these memories and these moments with us. And we can't wait to see you live on Sunday. I'm actually hosting one of the shows, so I'll be there, girl. Okay. Yes, thank you. All right. And I'm not going to take my shirt off when, oops, there goes my shirt. I'm not going to do that. (laughs) You know what? I wanted to ask. What is that song about? Because I know there's been some conversation about what it's really about, what people Mm -hmm. think it's about. What is Oops Oh My about? For me, uh, it's about self-love and appreciation. Uh, I remember watching Oprah, um, and she had two uh, doctors on there, and and they talked about being uh, looking at yourself in the mirror, going and standing naked, and loving everything you see in that mirror without wanting to change it. And then I just mixed it with the fact, you know, being around Jodeci, Devante, and they always used to talk about sex sales. So I just mixed the two. And people think about uh, the, the sexual thing, but it could be whatever anybody wants to put, <laughs> whatever meaning they want out of it. Right. But for me, it's really self-love and appreciation. Love that. Well, yeah. we can't wait to see it live this Sunday at the City Winery. I will see you there, Tweet, okay? Thank you so much. See you Sunday. I'll see you then. It's me to say what? In your All midday right. on 100.3 Phillies are in Bay.